furious uh, what to do. Uh, he, did, he didn't tell the, the Jews of, of Samaria or Galilee to, uh, to use force to tell Tiberius what to do. As a matter of fact, he said he was not there to uh, do a revolt upon the Roman Empire and Tiberius uh, and Augustus Caesar uh, during that time. He, what he was there to do is to say, you do it. You feed the people. You do the good works. You, do, you have the faith to go out there and preach to all nations uh, as he has commanded, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, unlike the four-year president, said that he would be there, there until the end of the age. Now, Jesus didn't say, go make a great government, right? What Jesus said was, you go do it. Uh, in, the, in modern times, that's maybe a tax deferral for a church to give charity. But it, it's, not, it's not the government's responsibility to be that safety net. That's, that, that's really in the neighborhood. Because what is that guy on the... Third, third Street is some marble building in, in D.C. really know about things happening on, uh, out here, except for all the federal lands they own. I'm sure they know all about that. I'm probably standing on one right now. But what, what's, what's, the, what, what's the real motivation for having a preacher on talking about, or I should say, reinventing uh, the Jesus philosophy on charity? But don't you see, it all has to do with social justice. Social justice. Now we talked about the two, we talked about the two fences that were outside the Democratic National Committee in Philadelphia, but we also have to see, talk about something else. It's very, very mean to have a fence between Mexico and right here in Arizona. It's very, very mean-spirited. The, the deer, the, the deer might like to migrate, and sometimes if, if you make a wall too high, that they can't jump the fence anymore. So they have to like, like do inbreeding on, on their side of the fence because they can't get across to meet some you know, diverse cultures uh, as far as the gene pool to, to, to mate. So we're making the deer go extinct. And it's very, very mean because it's hard. You know, Mexico is all very, very nice people. Okay, well maybe they're Catholic, you know? And we, you know that that's not some, you know my favorite religion because you know they have the they have things like mercy and they, they feed the poor and try to make us look bad but they actually do it on a cheaper budget so we don't really like that so much but it's a lot of poverty down there a lot of you know very very in trouble neighborhoods because they don't have it ever like we do up here now well, I just want you to know since 1973 there are now people alive who are voting uh, that are voting Republican because what well, the reason is is because uh, the Republican parents uh, graze their kids to be to be Republicans. We can't take that chance. It's, it's very possible we have kids, and what's going to happen to them is they may become Republicans instead of Democrats. And so it's safer for us to abort those kids, you know, and, and just treat them like they don't have any rights at all. Make sure that we that we kill them because if we do that, then that's really good for the population pool because we can control, which especially if we have the the Planned Parenthood around the black areas, we can make sure that the blacks don't take over, but still, we make sure that we, the, the Mexicans come in and bring us all sorts of hard work for very cheap labor, but most importantly, that they can vote. That's why we have dreamers now. The dreamers are, you know, they don't have any right to be here according to the historical constitution, but you know, the President Obama, he, he made it law, he signed it himself, he made a couple phone calls, and it's law now that the dreamers have, have they have a right to be here. and. That means they can vote, right? They can drive and they can vote. So we we have to do that because we can control which Mexicans come in here. I mean, if we don't like the ones that we think are going to vote Republican, we'll send them back. But as long as we think they're going to vote Democrat, well, they're going to be here. And we need them because our, our schools are starting to empty out a little bit here because we don't have the kids anymore. And all the Republican kids are going to the private schools. So we have a big problem here. So what we have to do is just think ahead. We have to make sure that we take care of the take care of the teachers, make sure that they get all sorts of good things for the benefits for the administration building because they've worked very hard to become teachers. We have to make sure that we take care of the kids, the kids that are still there. And the reason I say that is because we have all this abortion going on in America because the, the, the people who do the abortions, they're very, very good liberal Democrat voters. So we need them. You know, and we know that the kids, the little, the little kids inside the womb, it's like, it's like a bean inside of a, in, inside of a taco shell. They're nothings. You know, they're not people. And if we, if if we give them dignity and rights, then that means 
We have people we're trying to protect that don't vote for us and don't give us don't give us any campaign money. So what good is that for us? What we need is people who will like us and vote for us and go out and become community organizers for us. And that means that we have to have people come in from outside. And so it's Mexico, sure. It's very hateful for you to say no because they have every right to be in this country as we do. Because they have two feet, they have a brain, and you know what? They probably like to work harder than we do too. And we can uh, hire them later on and always have them as good as American citizens. So you gotta admit it's probably a good thing to have them that way. And so what we have to do is in the future make sure that we make that we make sure we take care of our voting population. And when we do that, we have to make sure that we have enough people in the voting population to make sure that not enough Republicans can outnumber us. But we still have the superdelegates and we still have the free giveaways. And so there's always gonna be people that we can give things to and they always will vote for us. It's very important. And you know, if we have a deficit, it's because we didn't tax the rich people enough. It's not because we handed out too much. You know, we just have to think ahead now. This is America the Great, America the Beautiful, America the Great Politician, and America the Beautiful Paycheck that goes to our campaign contributors, to our, to our offices. And so, once again, thank you very much for watching my stuff and listening to my side during this conversation about the wonderful, wonderful DMC uh, talent show. And I just wanted to say very well, done to Rodham Hillary Albany Clinton for your outstanding job in fighting Donald Trump in the future because Donald Trump is evil 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 and we got to make sure we beat him at the polls that way we can make sure that we have Democrats in the Senate we have Democrats in the House we have Democrats on the Supreme Court and we make sure that the people are taken care of because you take care of us and scratch our back we will take care of you and scratch your back and as far as if it's fair to the Republicans or not, or if they're going to have to have their wealth confiscated and redistributed, that's okay because we don't care. What we care about is our power and make sure that we have all the people that are going up against each other instead of going up against us. As long as we do that, everything will be okay. Okay? So, Barack Obama bless. Thank you very much for watching. Well... That's quite a mouthful there, Dizzy Dan, Dizzy Dim. And so I just wanted to say once again, uh, thanks for much for watching this. Uh, he, he really brought up a lot of uh, truths you're probably not going to hear without a filter in the press. You know, the, the, the Democrats like to use disingenuous terms. I'll just think of a couple here. Planned parenthood. It, it's not planned and it's not parenthood. Reproductive health. It's uh, not reproductive. And there's absolutely no health involved uh, we can go on forever so we, we just have to make sure that we, uh, we we have to make sure we call out we call these people out fight on their level and ha have the dignity have the dignity to not, to not be crude or incorrect like Donald Trump is but have the dignity uh, to stand up to these guys call them out and take them on because uh, they are the masters of the disingenuous argument and I, I really think that uh, just th through having the faith of the Holy Spirit and uh, some confidence to go out and, and really do what we're supposed to be doing as conservatives and as, and as Christians, that we can beat this stuff back. And uh, like I said, there will be a bottom and uh, it will be, it will be uh, reached probably sooner rather than later. Uh, one of the main reasons I don't like the federal central government is I'm very sure that a world is developing in this century where the major centers, New York and Washington, will be taken out, and it's going to be very important for the 50 states to have a capability to uh, to govern us flawlessly and seamlessly once that happens, until we can get it all back together. But as far as the strong central government, you can, you can, it's really bad to put all the eggs in one basket to, to break together, and so uh, that would just be total chaos. And so that's why I do like federalism, and that's why I really don't like centralized government. And so we just got to, like I said, kind of sit back, redraw the map over the next four years and get somebody there in 2020 who we know is going to be constitutional, uh, federal, uh, federal in the traditional sense and, uh, and respectful of the kings and queens of America more than the lobbyists. And the kings and queens of America, uh, believe it or not, are not the governor, not the mayor, not the kind of supervisor, but actually it's the, the man and woman or some weird combination from here on out. Uh, who's the head of household. 
So once again, God bless. This radiation this week is really, really knocking me out. We're, I, don't, I don't know if I'll be doing this tomorrow, but if I fill up to it, I will. We'll do day five. If not, episode five will come soon enough. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.